Good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, A Word from the Lord. James Ofer here with you, and we're glad that you are ready for another study from God's Word. Uh, we hope that you will uh, sit back, take notes, uh, open your Bible, study along with us, examine what we're saying, see if you find it true, and if if you do, we hope that you will accept and obey it. And if you don't think that it's true, if you think there's something contrary to what we're saying according to the Bible, then give us a call. We're going to open the phone lines up before it's all said and done, and so we'll be glad to entertain your questions or your comments on this matter. I think we're going to have pretty good, pretty interesting uh, study tonight <clears throat> having to do with uh, some things that are going on with the news. And so we want to uh, hope to tease you with that. Uh, what would you think about a church that uh, uh, is really a club? You know, how, how would you feel about it if your, if your church had uh, uh, wet and wild Wednesdays? That's what we're going to be discussing tonight. And so... Uh, we hope that you will uh, sit back and get ready to uh, study God's Word with us. Here's our contact information. If you want to reach me, you can call me at 276-340-2653, or you can reach me at awardmylord at gmail.com. And uh, I'll be glad to respond to you. If you'd like a Bible study, we'd like to be glad to come out and study with you. Of course, you're always welcome to come and visit with us at uh, 250 the Boulevard, or if you're in Martinsville, 823 Starling Avenue, or Danville, 120 American Legion. Uh, brethren there would always be glad to see you. I'm going to ask uh, uh, someone if they turn this monitor where I can see it uh, a little better, since this one's not working just exactly right. And uh, so we hope that you will uh, 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 come out and visit with us, take advantage of, of all the opportunities we have to, to study God's Word. So uh, let me just start off and ask you this question, and because I believe it's uh, really kind of the, the crux of what we're getting to tonight. You know, people always, uh, uh, they seem to enjoy or celebrate even diversity. Uh, we live in a society, everybody likes to be different, and, you know, we, we actually seem to praise that. You know, we actually, you know, celebrate unity in diversity in the religious world. Uh, I know there was a big, um, uh, several years ago, we went to a big unity movement, so-called unity movement, with the, uh, the Pentecostals and the Baptists, and I don't know who all was there, uh, over at Jackie Poe's church, and, Boy, they were just, you know, healing the land, I think is what it was. And, you know, we're all getting together and we're going to heal the land because we're all getting together and pretending like we like each other. Not too, not too many years uh, uh, later, down here in Eden at the, uh, uh, I think the First Baptist Church in Eden, uh, Gary Bowman is the preacher. They had a unity uh, meeting of some sort. The, the Methodists came over and preached. The Pentecostals came over and preached. And, and the Baptists were preaching. And, boy, we was all glad handing and patting everybody on the back and you know now where are we well we're all in our different places so but but everybody seems like well we're just getting along you know unity and diversity and so people celebrate that i mean you, you talk about a diversity <clears throat> in our society i mean we celebrate uh, uh immorality you know homosexual uh homosexuality is is up, upheld as well it's just a diverse a different lifestyle you know we ought to embrace our diversity and embrace our differences and you know we used to have uh pride parades to uh vaunt and flaunt uh, our diversity and, and how much people are are, are uh, uh, different from everybody else uh people want to be different they wear spiked hair and you know piercings all over their body and tattoos all over their body and you know hey you can't say anything about it because i'm just diverse now, now, friends, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not saying all diversity is bad. You know, obviously, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a very fun life if everybody was was the same. Uh, but but so all diversity is not bad. But when it comes to religion, when it comes to religion, and we're all speaking different things and going our own ways, is that is that really good? You know, how much diversity? Uh, is good, or how 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 good is diversity at all? Uh, so that's why we want we discussed tonight. You know, we're talking about diversity. How how far are we going to celebrate diversity in what we're what we're teaching now? Just to start off, I want to uh, play this this video clip. This is uh, a Baptist preacher from Martinsville, Tim Whitehart. This is what he said it's a number of years ago, but he's going to explain. He's going to explain how diversity works. Now, he's not going to use the word diverse, I don't think, but, but he is going to talk about the different denominations and differences in our, in our uh, religious beliefs and how that's not so bad. Listen to what he says. And we don't understand. And what we have is 
is you have all of these different denominations that are, many of them, still trusting Jesus as the way to heaven. <clears throat> now, they may do things different. You may have one that believes that Jesus is coming in the rapture. I believe that, by the way. Amen. Amen. And you may have another group that believes there's no rapture, but he's coming. And, uh, and he's coming at the end, and, and, but he's still coming. And, and second coming, but there's no rapture. It's not two, it's all one. And, and so that's the way he's coming. And so you have some that do that, believe that. Some that believe that's two like me. Some believe we're going to live through the tribulation. Some believe we're not. I believe we're not because I believe the Bible says we're safe from the wrath to come. However, there are good Bible-believing people. Are you listening to me this morning? That believe differently. As they believe John 14, 6, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. It doesn't matter when we get there, we're all going to the same place if they believe that, if they believe it. You see, the catalyst is Jesus, amen? So there are people that believe different things about that. There are people that believe in different types of music ought to be in the church. Those are methods. By the way, some is doctrine that is not essential for salvation. Some are methods. I'm talking about some things that believe are different. It is, it is doctrine. What I just said is doctrine. I'm talking about the Lord coming, but yet it's not essential for salvation. Secondly, there are people who have different methods than what we have. In other words, they come in and all they like are the hymns of the faith. They wouldn't dare sing a praise and worship song in this church. There are others who wouldn't dare sing a hymn. And so there are others that are more mixed. And there are some that, that, are, that, that all different styles. There are those who have one pastor over them. And then there are those that have a board of elders and they don't have one pastor and they, they have a, and, and a board of elders that they have as their hierarchy in their church. Now, I believe the way I believe because I believe the Bible teaches that. However, these things that I'm talking about, how many still with me this morning say amen? amen? All these things are not essential for salvation. They have nothing to do with salvation. It's just methods, modes, difference. Thus, you have different denominations. That's why a lot of these different denominations were set up because of the different methods. Some a little different doctrine on certain things. But you know what? By and large, most of the people that you believe, that you run into, and a lot of these churches I'm talking about around here believe that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by Jesus. Amen? How many still with you? Now, I'm not compromising by saying this. I'm being honest and telling you the truth. You don't hear the truth very often like this. Okay? Does that mean that we want every bit of the doctrine and different things in this church? No. No, it doesn't mean that. But it also doesn't mean they're going to hell if they're believing in Jesus. Are you listening? All right. How many still on board with me? All right. I keep asking that question a lot because I don't want you to miss it today. All All right. So... You don't hear truth like that very often. I don't know if he's talking about you don't hear truth like that from the Freedom Baptist Church or, or what. But anyway, I, you see, folks, he, he spent three, I think it was about three minutes or so, telling us how diversity is okay. You know, different doctrines, different methods. It's okay as long as you believe Jesus Christ. And that's okay. And, you know, it's not going to send you to hell. They're not salvation issues. But we don't want those in here. So... My point is, everybody's saying, well, yeah, diversity's okay. You do what you want to do. You sing the way you want to pl- sing, and you worship the way you want to worship, and, but, but I don't want it. You know, I, we're not going to have it. Now, I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. I'm not going to condemn you and, 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 and say you're going to hell, say you're lost, but, but we're not going to have it. We wouldn't do it. We wouldn't say it. So at some point, it seems like everybody's drawn a little bit of line here. You know, you, on one hand, in one breath, you're, you're praising diversity. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. And in the next breath, you're saying, no, we're not going to have it. Now, the, uh, this, this next clip we're going to play is, uh, you know, s- some of the same things. You know, you have people that are saying, well, everybody's okay. But then, for some reason, they don't like diversity when it comes to us. You know, one God, is that correct? Is it one God? Yeah, but we're not all one. Yes, we are. No, we're not. one God. We are one. One body. The church is one universe. Do you know what I believe? In addition to everything else, I believe that when we get to heaven, we're going to find Church of Christ, Moravians, Methodists, Baptists, probably even find a few Catholics there. You know what does the Bible say? 
Yeah, before do you get that, uh, just not only the Church of Christ is going to heaven. Well, I get it, it from... Is Christian people in all churches. God is not going to just pick one church. Well, I, I feel sorry for you. Well, he, I don't know where you're getting that junk from. I, you're not reading that Bible like we, are, we do. Well, I want everybody to know that the Martinsville Church of God loves everybody. I don't care what church you're in. <laughs> Every church that names the name of Jesus Christ, the Baptist churches, the Methodist churches, the churches of God, the Pentecostal Holiness Church, all the different churches in the area that believe that the Word of God is the infallible Word of God, they have saved people sitting in those churches today, and they are my brothers and our sisters, and I want you to know that we're with them 100%. Amen. All right, now, you see that, folks? For, see what we're saying? Everybody, well, we're all one. We're all one. We're all different, but we're all one. You can't condemn everybody because we're all one. But then, all of a sudden, well, I don't know where you're teaching that. We don't, you don't get that from the Bible. Then you got the Baptist preacher, Randy Linderman, saying, you know, I believe when we get to heaven, there's going to be Catholics, Moravians, you know, Baptists, maybe even some Church of Christ there. But later on, he would say that he won't fellowship the Catholics because they don't believe the same thing. And so we want to tout diversity is good. We want to tout differences are good. But then, on the other hand, we're going to say, well, we're not going to have anything to do with you down here. Then you got Jackie Pohl saying, if you believe in, that the Bible is the infallible word of God, you got say, they're saved people in all these churches. We know what, folks? I believe that this is the infallible word of God. According to Jackie Poe, I'd be his brother. But you know what? He'd tell people, don't go watching these programs on Wednesday nights. He tells, he tells his brethren not to, not to watch his brethren. So for some reason, diversity is okay, but then uh, we're going to draw the line somewhere. You know, it's not okay for you. Well, you know, hey, I'm just diverse from everybody else. See, why don't we just say it that? I, I'm, I'm diverse. I'm just, being, I'm just being me. You know, I'm just being different from everybody else. I'm just, I'm just following the Bible. So I'm definitely different from everybody else, but why would you condemn me? See, if you want to tout differences and you tout methods and doctrines and everything, different doctrines are okay, well, why would you condemn me? Why would you condemn the folks in the Church of Christ who are saying, hey, we want to follow the Bible? Why all of a sudden is that, is that not fine and well and good? Seems to me that the further you get away from the Bible, the better things are. So how much, the question that we're asking tonight then is just, you know, how much diversity are we going to take? You know, where do you, where do you draw the line? How much, how much diversity can you take? How, how diverse can you be? You know, where you, do you draw the diversity line? That's what I'm asking you tonight, friends. I'm asking you to ask your preacher and your pastor, well, how, where will we draw the line? Now, I want, I want to bring this up. This was in the, um, the news today. Uh, and so I just want to ask you this. Well, if it's so good, you know, if diversity is so good, would you, would you draw the line <clears throat> at, uh, at these folks? This is, the, this is the Life Center Church in Panama City Beach. Panama City Beach. Uh, this is what the news article said about it. There's a new place for spring breakers to party. Listen carefully. There's a new place for spring breakers to party in Panama City Beach. But it is a bar, a nightclub, or a church. Is it a bar, a nightclub, or a church? Tuesday, the sheriff and police chief are speaking out about who's t uh, what's taking place at the Life Center Church. Now, now, friends, I, I would just say these folks just they just being kind of diverse. You know, hey, you know, if you got you got biker Sunday, everybody can dress up like a hell's angel. Just being diverse, right? Isn't that right? Just Hey, you can have a, you can have your your dance recitals and your uh, your whatever you want to have in your in your worship services. I'd say these folks are being kind of diverse, maybe. 
You recall not too long ago, or maybe it's been about a year or so, I guess, uh, we did a, 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 a television program, a lesson on, uh, on the bar church out in Abilene. Yeah, we're going to set up in a bar. Hey, just being diverse, I guess. I mean, if, you, if, you're, if you're celebrating diversity, then you have to hold up these diverse people. But here the police chief and the sheriff, they're saying, well, you know, I'm not sure if this is a bar, if it's a club, or is it a church? Well, you, you decide. Here's what's going on at the, at the Life Center Church <clears throat> during spring break. They're having a, they're having a uh, nightly specials, you might say. And this is what's going on. Now, I'm going to show you. This is the itinerary for Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And this is every Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I guess, during the spring break uh, weeks, I guess. Now, I would, you know, I, I, I would have shown you the pictures that go along with these uh, 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 what, descriptions of what's going on, but they were so explicit that I couldn't. Now, this is from their website. This is from the Life Center Church website. On Saturday... On Saturday, it is for the pretty and the nasty. This event is hosted by the Kappa, Alpha, Psi, and Omega, a Kappa, Alpha, Psi, and Omega, Psi, Phi fraternities. They are coming in from all different campuses to hit this event, so who will win, the pretty or the nasty? All right, so it's going to be pretty nasty, I guess. Now I don't really know what that what that what that means, but you know I just don't know that I don't know that fits in church. But hey, maybe they're just being diverse. I, I don't know. Who knows? On Sunday now, on a Sunday, they're having the slumber Sunday. Slumber slump, slumber is a pajama event hosted by the sexiest ladies on the beach. That means come as you sleep, bring pillows. Don't forget your blankets and most importantly, your friends. So however you sleep, you know, that's how that's what you come as. It's a big slumber party. Now they actually changed the they actually changed the title of this. It was it was a a, a pajama lingerie party, but they took that off because hey, maybe pajama lingerie party just didn't really fit with church. So they took it down. Okay? Well, they're just being diverse, aren't they? Remember, this is the, the Life Center Church in Panama City Beach, uh, Florida, okay? Here we go. Here, that, that's Sunday. Well, Monday, now to get ready for Monday, Monday is anything but clothes showcases your artistic side featuring your mind and body. How creative can you be? Bear as you dare to attend a toga, body paint, etc., now notice it means this is a disclaimer. It says this is not a nude event. Now friends, I don't know, but if I if I got out my old Webster's dictionary, you know, or maybe the Funkin' Wagner's dictionary, and I looked up the word nude, I'm pretty sure it's gonna say no clothes. Now this is anything but clothes, so you wear anything but clothes. Now, if you wear a toga, isn't that clothes? Isn't that some article of clothing? So they're saying it is not a nude event. Remember, this is a church. This is a church we're talking about here. It's not a nude event, but, you know, uh, hey, wear anything but clothes. All right, that's on Monday. On Tuesday, they're doing a Mardi Gras theme. Mardi Gras, we are taking you to Bourbon Street in Panama City Beach, Florida, featuring beads, masks, toys, party traditions, and much more. What will you do for your beads? Maybe a backflip or a bunny hop? Well, nothing like Mardi Gras for the master, right? Hey, just being diverse, right? Now, friends, are you, are you drawing the line yet? Are you saying, are you like the sheriff and the, and the police chief? Are you saying, hey, this doesn't really sound like a church? Or are you embracing diversity? See, now you... You can't really condemn people, right? Judge not that you be not judged. Can't, you can't really say, no, no, that's not church. Hey, embrace diversity, folks. 
You got to embrace it. Yeah, they're, they're, just, they're having church, right? Well, let's look at Wednesday. Now, Wednesday is Wet and Wild Wednesday. This is Wet and Wild Wednesday. This event brings the fun out. Water slide may be included. LOL. <laughs> Swimsuits, and I like this part. Swimsuits are highly suggested. White water meets tabernacle in PCB with a little twerking? Well, does that sound like something that goes on in church? Water slides? Bathing suits? Twerking? Well, now, I'll tell you what, folks. I have seen some of these Pentecostal churches, these holiness churches, and, you know, they may not call it twerking, but they sure are twitching. But maybe I just don't embrace diversity like I should. Maybe I'm just closed-minded. Maybe I'm just being too diverse the other way. I don't know, friends. You tell me. Is this church or is this a club? You know, is, is this, is this going to go? Are we going to embrace this or not? Now, Thursday, Thursday is illumination. Illumination is a rave-styled event with the best sound and lighting system on the beach. Featuring black lights, smoke machines, and complimentary glow-in-the-dark pieces, uh, LED bracelets, and more. Well, you got the lights and fancy lights and smoke machines. You know what? I've been to Osborne Baptist Church up here in Eden. They got smoke machines and lights and loud music. Now, so I don't know, folks. Maybe if hey. If you, uh, if you attend uh, Osborne Baptist Church, does that sound like something maybe y'all have? Maybe you don't have the black lights, but hey, I know you got the smoke machines and the loud music and the colored lights. I've seen it. So before you condemn, maybe you need to brace diversity. So, well, I, that can't go on in church. Well, wait a minute. Yes, maybe it can go on in church because you're not doing far from it. And I've heard stories tell about what goes on in Osborne that's just a big club now. You know, so maybe, maybe the, 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 uh, 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 the tabernacle there in uh, Panama City Beach, Florida, you know, maybe this uh, Life Center Church at the tabernacle, maybe they're not too far off. Maybe y'all just, maybe they're just a little ahead of the curve than some of these churches. But hey, are you going to embrace diversity? You see what we're doing, friends? I'm showing you. I'm showing you. They're doing some of the same things that you're doing. Now, Project PCB, Project Panama City Beach. We've all seen the movie. Well, I haven't. But it says, we've all seen the movie. Now it's time to experience the thrill in real life. This event is only for people that are born partiers. That, that really sounds like worship, doesn't it? Hey, come, you know, come worship the Lord right here only if you're a born partier. Maybe that should be born again partier. I don't know. When we say party all night long, this might not end till the sun comes up. Well, now you say, well, see that James, that, you, you, somebody's out there on their couch. They're sitting in their recliner. They're sitting in their green recliner and they're saying, James, that's just very irreverent, that's blasphemous, I can't believe they would do that party till the sun comes up. Well, hey, you're going to have a sunrise service. Maybe they just get a head start on you, right? I know in a couple weeks all you folks are going to be having some big special ordeal about a sunrise service. Well, these folks in Palm City, I mean Panama City Beach, Florida, they just having their own version of, of sunrise service. Right? If you, Hey, don't condemn don't condemn. You got to embrace the diversity. You got to embrace the diversity. Now that's what's going on right here. This is this is going on in Panama City Beach at the at the the Life Center Church, the Tabernacle, the Life Center Church of the Tabernacle is what they're calling it. Now, are, are you are you are you condemning this? Well, before you before you bring out the old gavel and start passing judgment, all you judgmental types out there, I know how you are. You like to pass judgment on people. Let's see what the, let's see what an, another news article said about this whole situation. It said the club is reportedly now, now, now they're calling it a club. That's kind of judgmental 
of this news article, I believe, to call it the club, when it's, it's definitely a church. I mean, it actually has a tax-exempt status, or it did, till the government came in and revoked it. But, you know, uh, I think that's kind of judgmental. But anyway, the club is reportedly owned by Marcus Q. Bishop, the former pastor at Faith Christian Family Church. Despite pushback from authorities, promoters have said that amnesia, now that's, that's what they're calling it, the, uh, the Life Center Church, and this event is called amnesia. It's called amnesia because they say, uh, you know, nights you'll never remember, but people with people you'll never forget. So I, I don't know. I never really had a desire to do something that I would forget. But anyway, it's a youth group that provides safe place where spring breakers can sober up. Now, that's what Marcus Q. Bishop said. He said, Bishop was recently sentenced to probation for reportedly giving a minor marijuana and was also accused of kissing the 16-year-old teen against her will during an incident at his home last September. All right? Now, you know, I think that's kind of judgmental for them to say that about, uh, about this fella. I mean, I'm sure he, uh, he had good intention, and, uh, you know, people should just embrace the, the, di the diversity, you know, is really what I'm, what I'm saying. You know, embrace the diversity. Let's don't be judgmental, all right? Um, the Life Center Church has a sign out front that reads Spring Break Amnesia, the tabernacle. Uh, the ATM parked right out in front grabbed the attention of Sheriff McKeithen, so he went inside to check it out. Now, Call me if I call me if someone knows this, but I'm pretty sure that there's some churches around here that have ATM machines inside of them. Is there? Is there a church around here that has an ATM machine inside of it? I know that places like Joel Osborne's church do. So I don't know why the sheriff would be upset about an ATM machine being right outside a, a church building. I mean, the big mega churches do it all the time, right? In case we, we pass the plate and you don't have any, you know, paper on you, you know, no cash. Need you have a way to put something in the pot there, see? Again, I, I, I just think these sheriffs, these police officers, these authorities, they're not embracing uh, uh, diversity very well. All right? He said, this is what the sheriff said. The sheriff said, you turn around and look at the walls on the church and you see T-shirts with graphic, explicit sexual pictures on them and I'm scratching my head. How can this be a church and this going on, said Sheriff, Sheriff McKeithen. Well, Sheriff, you just closed-minded. Uh, you're just a closed-minded bigot. See, you got some kind of phobia here. All right. Tabernacle promoters told Channel New, uh, News Channel Seven they provide a safe place for spring breakers to sober up, but the sheriff disagrees, and so does Panama City Beach Chief, uh, Police Chief Drew Whitman. It's very disturbing, especially inside our city limits here in Bay County. I think we were better than that, said Chief Whitman. Right on the front door, they have a sign that says they have a strict anti-drug and anti-alcohol policy. But if you go on their Facebook page, you can see that they're selling T-shirts that say things like, I hate being sober. All right? Uh, so, so the sheriff is pretty convinced that it's a club now. I don't know. I, I think it's, you know, I think there's being very judgmental. News Channel 7 has numerous, made numerous calls to Reverend Marcus Bishop, who owns and operates the church. He's not called us back, but the church did send us an email directing us to their website where they say the Tabernacle is a drug and alcohol free community for the youth to go spring break at night to interact with each other in a fun, safe environment. Now, here's the thing. See, and they're, and they, they're just like a church, they take up money. Yeah, they, they take up money. I mean, it's just a $20 cover charge. I mean, no, it's not a cover charge. It's a donation, $20 donation to get in. See? Now, friends, are you going to draw the line at this? Or are you going to say, no, that's not a church? Are you saying that's not a church? You, you be honest with yourself. You're sitting at home and you're saying, James, that's, that's not a church. The sheriff's right. He, that's, that's a club. That's a club. Now, the fact that Mr. Uh, uh, Marcus Q. Bishop, 
Reverend Marcus Q. Bishop has, uh, has previous arrest charges. The sheriff said it's concerning, but he's not the only one out there with a criminal record that's running an enterprise like this. But he's the only one out there flying under the colors of a church that's doing it. And that's very disturbing to me. Well, that $20 donation, you know? So, you know, I, I don't know. To me, to me, there's a lot of people just being kind of uh, uh, judgmental, being very harsh on these folks. All right? Uh, the Life Center's theology is currently unclear. Well, now why is that so bad? Can't you have an unclear theology in your church? All right? It says in, in 2013 interview with W. JHGTV Bishop discussed leaving his mega church behind and launching the Life Center, a church that he said had no religion or rules. Now, what's wrong with that, folks? What's wrong with that? That doesn't sound much different than what I've heard around here. Right? It doesn't sound any different than what I've heard around here. I mean, I could play you clip after clip of people over in, say, for example, the Martinsville Church of God, Jackie Poe's church, you know, Jackie's church, Jackie's rules. And I, somebody needs to lose their dignity. Well, that sounds like no rules to me. Anything goes, right? You got people jumping pews and hollering and shouting and screaming and rolling around the floor and passing out and rolling. Have you, have you judged these people right here? Are you telling me that the life center church is not really a church? See, I, I, I'd, I'd like for someone to call in and say that. Go ahead and put the phone numbers up if you would, Matt. Let's see if someone will call in and... Are, are, you, are you all for this or are you all against it? You know, should, should, should they be considered a church? Should they be left alone or... Or what, what, are we, what are we talking about here? I mean, Marcus Q. Bishop, you know, he's just an enterprising fella. He's just concerned for lost people, and he's got a, he's got a mega church and a bar. Is that, is that a problem? Are you not embracing diversity like you should, my friend? See, I mean, we've we been told doctrines don't matter. Well, what about this doctrine? He's got a doctrine that says there's no doctrine. What about the doctrine that says no rules? I mean, I know he believes in Jesus. I'm going to read you a quote. He believes in Jesus. He says he's a follower of Jesus. So therefore, that's, that's about it, isn't it? Didn't we just hear Tim Whitehart say, hey, as long as you believe Jesus Christ, Son of God, you heard Jackie Poe say, hey, if you believe this is the infallible word of God, your brothers and sisters, anybody going to come in and call in and weigh in on the, on the life center church? See, my friends, my point is this. You're, you're saying don't judge, and you're saying, oh, let's you know, just do what you want to do. Can't condemn me. We let our preacher do what he wants to do, and he lets us do what we want to do. Well, are you being judgmental? Are you going to embrace the diversity? Is this a club or is this a church? See? I mean, we're being told all the time, you know, there's nothing in a name. There's, you know, nothing in doctrines. It doesn't really matter. Listen to what Mr. Reverend Marcus Q. Bishop says. He says, it's not about what label you wear or title you carry. It's about what goes on inside of you. I've heard that a thousand times. But I've heard it one. Hey, hey it, it's, it's in my heart right here. You can't judge me. You can't judge my heart. Now, you want a pass when you say it. Are you going to give him a pass when he says it? See, friends, I really hope that this is kind of sinking in because this is what happens when you say, well, don't, you know, don't draw a line. Don't judge. Don't. Don't be uh, uh, judgmental. You know, embrace diversity. 
He said, I'm a follower of Jesus. There he is. I'm a follower of Jesus. Boy, you, you, folks, no, he, he, he's definitely running the church, right? He's a follower of Jesus. Listen, no rules, no religion. He said, I'm a follower of Jesus. I, I, I practice Buddhism. Well, he's just being real diverse. He just, oh, wait a minute. I, I thought the church of your choice didn't matter. You can't condemn him for, for practicing Buddhism, right? You mean to tell me you're going to condemn him for practicing Buddhism when, when your hero right down here in Asheville, Billy Graham, says that people can, will be in heaven who don't even know the name of Jesus? This man, at least he knows the name of Jesus. Friends, are, are, I guess no one's going to condemn these folks. Everybody's, everybody's embracing them. Well, everybody's going to embrace them. They're, that's fine. Or is it? See, friend, hey, I believe in Jesus. I, I follow Jesus. I'm a practice of Buddhism. I'm a student of Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. I don't think that's the guy, the little the bear, is it? And I am a student in miracles and more than anything, I am passionate about a path of reality that manifests in love and peace. Well, that just gives you a warm fuzzy right here, doesn't it? He just, you know, he's about, he's about, he's about reality. I'm passionate about reality. No, he's passionate about them $20 that come in ahead every night. That's what he's passionate about. No, but friends, we can't judge him, right? Are you going to draw the line at this diversity? Is this, is this too diverse? See, my whole point, friends, is this too diverse? Are you saying that's, that's, that, goes, that goes too far? Friends, you can't say that because, remember, we just heard... We just heard this man, Tim Whitehart, say this. They have nothing to do with salvation. It's just methods, modes, difference. Thus, you have different denominations. That's why. All right. Methods, modes, di di just different denominations. A lot of these different. doctrine on certain things. But you know what? By and large, most of the people that you believe, that you run into, and a lot of these churches I'm talking about around here believe that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes unto the Father but by Jesus. Say man, how many still with me? Alright, there you go. You believe in Jesus? You know, it's just different methods, modes, differences. Not, not salvation parts. You know, it doesn't have anything to do with salvation. You know, doctrine's different, whatever. Are you going to give him a pass? Are you going to give him a pass, friends? You know what? You have to. You have to give him a pass if you want to do whatever you want to do. But see, friends, here's the thing. Everybody wants to embrace diversity. This is where we started. Everybody wants to embrace diversity and different doctrines and different methods. Until we come along. Until we come along and say, you know what? We want to be diverse. We want to be more diverse than anybody else. We want to just get back to the Bible. Oh, 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 you talk about getting people upset. We're not allowed to be diverse to the point that we want to exclude everything but the Bible. We can't be part of the little clique that's included in the diversity crowd because we're too diverse the other way. See, in religion, what diversity means is you get to do whatever you want to. In other words, you can get as far away from the Bible as you want to. That's being diversity. But if you go back to the Bible, whoa, you're being a judgmental, hateful, you know, Pharisee. That's what you are. So we, we, we're, di we're diverse from everybody else. We're saying just get back to the Bible. And the reason I know that is because this. 
This is a letter that, uh, that I received in the mail yesterday, day before. <clears throat> and um, I know you can't read that. I've enlarged a portion of it, and you can't read that. But luckily, I have the gift of interpretation, and I can read this. I'm just joking, just joking. I can read it. It took me a while to cipher it all out, but I can read it. And this is what it says. This is what it says. It says, you need to pray and read your Bible every day, all the Bible, and God will lead you. He'll let you know you're not supposed to spread discord and argue over the Bible. See, friends, you can be as diverse as you want to be until you bring up the Bible. Then it's Katie bar the door the other way. Oh, you know, you being a judgmental, hateful, misleading people. He said, they say, you're supposed to, not supposed to spread discord or argue over the Bible. It's in there, and if you know the Bible like you claim to, you'll know which verse tells you that. Well, they sure didn't know it, and they sure weren't going to tell me. I guess because, like we just said, as long as you stay away from the Bible, you can be diverse. But the minute you, but the minute you start bringing the, the, the Bible up as the standard, then you become wrong, you know. You can't be diverse by going back to the Bible. You can only be diverse by getting away from the Bible. You see, friends, this is what we're talking about. Now, the reason we got this letter <clears throat> is because one of our brethren left some tracks on cars. Just out of love, you know, maybe someone would, would, would read one. And we get this letter. Stop spreading discord. Stop arguing over the scripture. Didn't anybody say a thing to them? Just gave them a track. And all of a sudden, you know, we're the bad guy. You know what? I, I, said, if, I thought, you know, if, if it had been a pamphlet for a free pizza, no one had ever bothered to call, would they? They wouldn't have said anything. Get a free pizza. Oh. Somebody left a free pizza coupon on my car. But again, you give people the Bible, well, all of a sudden, no, we don't tolerate that kind of diversity. We're, we're not letting you go that direction. You get as far away from the Bible as you want to, and that's all right. But you go back to the Bible to be diverse. You get your diversity by going back and holding to the Bible, now you're in trouble. See, but again, I... I I thought, I thought differences were supposed to be okay. And I thought we were supposed to embrace diversity. Now someone says, well, James, you know, I don't think you've given a scripture all night. Well, I'm just <laughs> trying to be diverse like you all. But just to show you that I'm the kind of individual that wants diversity by going back to the Bible, here we, here's what we have. You know what? I want you to look at this. In Acts 20, verse 17... Acts 20 and verse 17, I want you to notice what Paul is doing here. Paul sends for the, the elders of uh, Ephesus, and he calls them to come to Miletus, all right? And from, from Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. Now, what's he going to do? He's going to tell them something. And when they were come, he said unto them, you know, from this day that I came to Asia, after, after what manner I have been with you uh, at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mine and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying away to the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and taught you publicly from house to house. Now, see, Paul's diversity was going back to the Scripture. It was warning people. It was telling people what they needed to hear. Well, that's the kind of diversity I want. I want to get back to the Bible. And so he's telling the elders at, at, uh, at, uh, from Ephesus, he's telling them, he says, let's come on down here in verse 28. He says, verse 27, I have not shunned to declare unto you the whole counsel of God, Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to the all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers 
to feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. Verse 29. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. You see what Paul did here? Here's what Paul did. Paul said, I'm warning you about people who are getting away from the scriptures. I'm telling you they're, they're grievous wolves. Now, folks, he's talking to people who were definitely in the right church who are definitely worshiping God the right way. And yet he's warning them about individuals who are going to stray away from that doctrine. You're on the word from the Lord? You're on the word from the Lord? Um, I got a question. All right. In the Bible, where it says about how women should dress and keep their head covered and everything. Is that how women, was he telling that how women should dress today? Well, was that back in? In 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 11 is where he's talking about Head coverings and things like that, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. All right. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, it's on his head, but every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered, it's on her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. Now, here's the, here's the key to this. As you're reading down through this, you need to keep in mind two things. Number one, Paul is writing to the church at Corinth. And this was obviously something that was... Um, specific just to Corinth because no, notice what he says. As you come on down in the same context, he says, verse 14, Doth not even nature itself teach you that, is, that if a man have long hair, it's a shame unto him? Now, does nature teach you that a man's hair is naturally short? If a man just lets his hair grow naturally, is it, does it grow short or does it grow long? It grows long. I mean, even, even I, with the little hair that I have, I have to cut my hair. Or it, it grows long. So this nature is not nature in the sense of uh, the natural law, like my hair growing. This nature is a long-standing practice. Like someone does something and it becomes second nature to them. This is the custom. And as a matter of fact, notice what he says in verse 16. He said, but if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the church of God. So all the things that were going on in Corinth as far as head coverings, Paul says, if you want to be contentious and, and be dogmatic that this is how it has to be, a man has to take his hat off or a woman has to put a, a covering on her head, we don't have that kind of customs in the church of God. So that, to answer your question, that was something that was happening in the first century in that specific location. Okay? So it's not for now. Not for now. Not for now. Okay? Okay, thank you. All right, thanks for your call. All right, now, folks, so here. Here's what we're talking about. So here's Paul in Acts 20, and he's, and he's talking to these elders and he's telling them, look, I'm warning you, someone's going to come in and lead you away. Now, if Paul is talking to people who we know are right, and he says any deviation from the scriptures that he's been teaching is wrong, then what are we supposed to do with these people that aren't even remotely? I'm talking about not even a 52nd cousin twice removed from the church. What are we supposed to do about them? Can we say that they're wrong? Paul is always warning about differences. He's warning about individuals who are, uh, uh, who are different. He's warning about people who come in and 
teach another doctrine. Notice this if you would. In 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1 and verse th uh, 3. 1 Timothy 1 and verse 3. Paul tells Timothy, he said, uh, I besought thee to abide to the Ephesus when I went to Macedonia that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Now the denominations, the churches of men tell us, well, doctrines don't matter. They're just di modes and differences and, you know, uh, uh, you know, customs or whatever, just di different doctrines, but they don't, they're not salvation issues. Well, Paul seems to think they are salvation issues. He's telling, he's telling Timothy, don't let anybody teach some other doctrine. So Paul is not embracing diversity that says anything goes. Paul would say to this guy down here in, in, uh, 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 in, in Florida, Panama City Beach, Florida, he would tell him, look, you are not running a church. What you have here is not a church, it's a club. It's a nightclub. It's a bar. It's a dance. It's a disco. It's far from anything like a church. And he would say the same thing to Marcus Q. Bishop as he would say to Jackie Poe or Tim Whitehart or Chief Apostle of the World Wide Web or whoever that is in, in Danville. He'd say the same thing to Jerry Carter or, or Dwayne King or you just pick a preacher. He'd say, what you're doing here, this is not a church. This is not the church you read about in the Bible. You got too many differences, too many doctrines. And the only reason people give people a break on things like this guy down here at the, at the, at the, uh, uh, the disco church, the club church, is because they want to do what they want to do too. But look what Paul says in 1 Timothy 1 Timothy 6 and verse 3. He says, If any man teach otherwise. Wait a minute, Paul. Any man teach otherwise? I thought we could teach different doctrines and be okay. No, if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strives of words wherewith cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmising, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of uh, uh, and and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. You know what I think Paul just described: the majority of people in these so-called churches. They think that gain is godliness, and they don't know anything. They don't know come here from sick when it comes to the Bible. They're teaching everything that's otherwise. They're consenting to any kind of words because, after all, hey, anything goes. We're just all diverse. We're all doing our own doctrines, saying our own thing, doing our own thing. Paul will say, stay away from those folks. And friends, that's what we're telling you. When, when a preacher gets up and tells you something that's from the Bible and yet he can't find it in the Bible, he says, well, God said and he can't show it in the Bible. He starts telling you about the church and you, you can't find it in the Bible. He starts telling you about the Baptist church and the Methodist church the Lutheran church and it's not in the Bible. You know what? Paul says what you need to do is you need to stay away from those folks because those men are, are of, of corrupt minds. They're teaching a different doctrine. They're diverse by going away from the Bible. I want to be diverse from everybody else by going back to the Bible. You come on down in, in chapter 6, and I don't have, I just got about a minute here, if that long. You know what Paul said? Paul said in verse 10, he said, charge them that uh, for the love of money is the root of all evil. While some have covered after, have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through many sorrows. And then he says in verse 17, he says, uh, Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, trust in uncertain riches. The very thing 
that these guys are doing in these bar churches and mega churches are the very thing Paul said don't do. Covet after, covet after riches, glory. So the very thing that Marcus Q. Bishop is doing is no different from what these other pastors are doing. And that's what we're saying to you, friends. If you're going to say diversity is good, well, why don't you be diverse by going back to the Bible? You'll be diverse from a whole lot of people because a lot of people don't want to hear the Bible. But your friends in the Church of Christ do. We're diverse this way by going back to the Bible. Friends, I'm out of time. I'm out of time. If we can assist you in any way, my phone number again is 276-340-2653 at wordandlord at gmail.com. We meet at 250 the Boulevard Sundays and Thursdays. And if we can assist you in any way in being diverse and getting back to the Bible, we want to do that very thing. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.